Link has embarked on many adventures over the past 35 plus years, and despite our hero being portrayed mostly as a silent lone wolf protagonist, he has a decent amount of family members that make appearances throughout his quests, aiding him in their own ways. In this video, I think it'll be fun to talk about all of his family members that make appearances in his games and rank them from worst to best. There are actually some obscure family members on this list that I don't really hear people talk about much, so make sure to watch until the end and not miss out on some really interesting ones. So without further ado, let's start ranking these family members starting from the worst. During my research for this video, I didn't come across any family members of Link's that stood out as being blatantly bad. The Legend of Zelda is a video game franchise largely aimed at children, so it makes sense that Nintendo opted to not have some piece of crap taking dumps on our hero throughout his journey. However, one family member that mostly just seems mid, and kind of rubs me the wrong way in some areas is Link's granddad from the Minish Cap, Smith, who fittingly enough, is a blacksmith. His figurine in-game description says he's the finest swordsmith in Hyrule, and that he apparently was a swordsman in his youth. At the beginning of the game, he entrusts Link to deliver a sword of Zelda back to Hyrule Castle to the king. This shows that his grandfather has a lot of trust in Link, which is an important quality to have. However, things get a little hairy at Hyrule Castle. During the Pekori Festival, the evil Vadi turns Princess Zelda to stone, and this causes the king to formulate a plan to reforge the Pekori Blade in order to lift the curse and save her. There's talk of needing to send someone to search for the Pekori to get them to reforge the sword, and out of the blue, Link's granddad pipes up and straight up volunteers Link to go on this dangerous and life-threatening voyage. I don't know about you, but it seems kind of messed up that he didn't ask Link first if he was up to going or not. Smith volunteers Link in front of the King of Hyrule, where Link can't really say no because the literal king is right in front of him. Also, it's not like Link is an adult here. The reason why they're sending him to the Bakori is because he's a child and he's able to see the little creatures. So Smith is pretty much telling his child grandson to go on a dangerous voyage that might get Link killed. I might be looking too into it with his observation, but I guess it is a little redeeming that Smith tells Link good luck, and to be careful and gives him his swords so that Link can protect himself. Another redeeming quality about Smith is that during your quest, you can go to his house, and he gives you little hints on where to go next if you get stuck, so at least he's a little bit helpful. He is pretty dry with his dialogue though, so it's not like he's all that interesting to talk to in-game. So with that, let's move on to the next family member. For the next best family member of Link's, we have one that can totally go over your head if you're not paying attention, where we have Link's dad from Breath of the Wild. He'll probably go over your head because he's not an actual character that you can interact with in the game, where he is only talked about briefly by Zelda during one of the memory cutscenes. In this cutscene, you can see Link practicing swordplay in the rain next to Zelda, and she remarks how his path in life reminds her of Link's father, where both became a successful knight due to commitment in their training. That's pretty much all the canon information we know about Link's dad, where it's apparent Link became a knight to follow in the footsteps of his father. Being that you don't see Link's dad during the game, it's a chance that he was killed during some battle to protect Hyrule, but that hasn't been confirmed or anything. I put this family member at this spot on the list, because we don't really know enough about his dad to make a determination on how good of a character he is, so for all intents and purposes, he can just be regarded as basic. It does seem like a positive personality trait that he was loyal to Hyrule, fighting for its survival as a knight, but Link has amnesia in Breath of the Wild, and he's pretty much basically a mute, so we probably won't get any information out of him regarding his family lineage. I find it interesting how Link's dad is who got Link interested in being a knight though, because without his dad, Link might have never practiced swordplay, might have never been recognized as the Chosen One, and Calamity Ganon could have taken over Hyrule permanently with no hero to stop him. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that we actually do get a glimpse of what Link's dad could have looked like in-game, where in the Japanese version of the Creating of Champion art book that was published by Nintendo, there's a picture of an unused concept art of Link standing next to his sister and father. This image is obviously unused in the game, but it gives a little inside information on what Link's family could have looked like. And honestly, Link's father kind of looks like a badass in this picture, and he sort of looks like a more jacked and constipated version of Alfonso from Spirit Tracks. Nintendo is always about making Link a blank slate that the player can project themselves onto, but I honestly wouldn't have minded this character of Link's dad being more prevalent in Breath of the Wild. It would have added more to the story in my opinion. So with that, let's move on to the next family member. For the next best family member, we have someone from one of the 3D Zelda games, Aril, who is Link's 8 year old sister from The Wind Waker. Aril acts as a sweet innocent child, where her figurine description in game says she's adored by all who meet her, and she is kind and true to her family, and her most treasured belonging is a telescope that she so kindly lends to Link for a day because it's his birthday. Honestly, it's kind of messed up to give someone a present for your birthday that you can only use for a day, but she's basically a toddler, so I guess you have to give her a pass. Her figuring description also says that her current goal is to learn how to fetch water so she can help out her grandmother, which shows that she isn't that bright, because come on, even a moron could pick up a water bowl and carry around places. She does get good family member points for being compassionate though, for when she sees Tetra fall in the woods, she urges Link to help her. Once she gets snatched up by the Helmrock King and you save her later in the game, she sails around with Tetra and her pirates and even sends letters to Link periodically, which is honestly kind of sweet. So all in all, Aurel doesn't really directly help Link in his adventure, except for maybe giving him the telescope, which I admittedly barely ever used. But she is a good family member and character in the game because she is sweet and caring, which counteracts the doom and gloom of having to fight the evil Ganondorf and his henchmen. 
Next up, we have the first of Link's family to ever be introduced. Link's unnamed uncle from A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo. Link's uncle only really exists in the very beginning of the game, whereas the game starts. Your uncle sets off to Hyrule Castle with a sword and shield in hand and tells you to stay put. Link disobeys and sneaks into the castle, where you can find your uncle mortally wounded. He then tells the player that he can save the princess and gives him his sword and shield and teaches him a spin attack right before he dies. Link's uncle gets major brownie points for being such a key role in Link's quest to save Hyrule. The sword and shield are two extremely important items that were given to him, and Link would be totally screwed and unable to progress without them. I also think it's sweet of his uncle to advise Link to stay put in his bed and wait for him to come back. He knows that it's dangerous outside, and he wants to protect Link, so he risks his life to protect his nephew and the land of Hyrule. I didn't place this family member higher on the list, because your exposure to him in game is extremely limited, but once he dies, you don't see him ever again until the end credit sequence, where he's brought back to life after Link wishes the Triforce room to come back, so there's not much time to grow an emotional attachment towards the guy. Like if Nintendo really wanted Link's uncle's death to be more impactful, they would have waited until later in the game to kill him off after the player developed more of an attachment towards him. Now let's move on to the next best family member. For the third best family member, we have someone that's not blatantly described as Link's family in game, the hero spear from Twilight Princess, who teaches Link seven hidden skills or combat techniques throughout his adventure. We don't know the exact relation between Link and this ghost, but based on the passage from Hyrule Astoria, the hero spear is the same child Link from Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and is Twilight Princess Link's ancestor. As you may know, in the Zelda timeline, the events of Ocarina of Time split off into three, where in one, after Link finds out about Ganondorf's evil doings as an adult, he travels back in time as a child and warns everyone of Ganondorf's evil plan which results in Ganondorf being executed before Link's adventure in Ocarina of Time can even take place. At this point, Link feels unfulfilled, as he never got to embark on an adventure to prove himself, where he goes unremembered as a hero. The reason why this Link teaches Twilight Princess Link his combat techniques is because he wants to pass down the proof of his courage. The hero's spirit has regrets that he was unable to pass on the lessons of his life when he was alive, so as a ghost, he wants to erase his regrets by teaching Twilight Princess Link his skill. In the game, he even refers to Link as son. While playing Twilight Princess, this plot isn't really laid out at all, where the hero's spirit just seems like some random guy teaching you sword techniques, but with the context from Hyrule Astoria, the quality of this character elevates by a significant amount. A previous generation of Link is proving his worth in fulfilling his purpose to the current generation Link so that he can rest peacefully without regret. Also, it is definitely a bonus that he teaches you some pretty badass sword techniques that aren't really necessary to progress, but are super fun to play around with and make combat a lot easier and more fun. The hero's spirit is a bit dry with his dialogue, but his stoic and serious nature matches the character of how Link acts in a lot of Zelda games, and really fits the mood of Twilight Princess. Now let's move on to the next character. For the next best family member of Link's, we'll have to go with another obscure character of Link's mom from Ocarina of Time. You never get to see her, but after being in the Forest Temple, a Deku sprout appears and fills Link in on the details of his mom. During the Hyrulean Civil War, when Link was a baby and fires were blazing all around, his mom was mortally wounded and was searching for a safe haven for a baby to survive. She ran into the forest and found the Great Deku Tree, whom she gave baby Link to, because she was moments before dying and had no other choice. The Great Deku Tree took Link in and raised him as one of his own, because he sensed that Link was destined for greatness. That's all the canon information that we know about Link's mom, but her last dying action before her passing of bringing her child to safety really speaks to what kind of character she was and could have been if she survived. Even with all the danger around her and being severely wounded, she still found the effort to bring her son to safety, above all else. And nothing really can top that. Except... Now by process of elimination, you all can probably guess who the number one entry is. This individual's pure kindness and goodness is truly admirable, and is leagues above all other people that I talked about previously. Their refined positivity and godly passion for Link and his quest is unmatched, and exemplifies the qualities that all went in their own family. This individual is, of course, Link's father, the saint, the OG, the literal king, King Harkonnen from Zelda CDI. <laughs> alright, alright, settle down. I know what you may be thinking. Offbeat. King Harkonnen is not Link's dad. They're not even related. Well, with that, you are mistaken. And it can all be proven with one word. My boy. My boy. My boy. If that isn't a loving father calling for his dear old son, I don't know what is. Also, I know what else you may be thinking. King Harkonnen is Zelda's father. How can King Harkonnen be Zelda's dad as well? Well, Link and Zelda are siblings. Just look at these two. That, my friends, is a classic Luke and Leia from Star Wars situation. During A Link to the Past, when your uncle is about to die, his dying last words are, Zelda is your dot dot dot. Now what else could that mean? Zelda is your sister. It's an obvious Star Wars reference that can't be missed. So that's that, case closed. King Harkonnen is the best Link family member. No questions asked. Alright, alright, joke's over. I thought I'd add that to spice things up a bit. King Harkonnen is definitely not related to Link, thank goodness. 
Link's best family member hands down has to go to his grandma from the Wind Waker, who is honestly the sweetest and nicest lady in all of Hyrule. At the beginning of the game, she is super sweet and gives Link his snazzy looking hero's clothes as a birthday present. She quickly becomes worried, however, where after Ariel was kidnapped by the Helmrock King, she is obviously distressed, and as Link sails away with Tetra to try to find her, you can see her gazing at Link from her balcony, or at least trying to gaze out at Link. The railing is literally blocking her line of sight, so I'm not sure why she's standing there like that, but anyway. Her being worried shows that she's a loving and caring grandma who worries about her grandchildren. Later on in the game, when Link returns to Outside Island, one of the NPCs tells Link that his grandma has been really depressed ever since Link left the island, and that she hardly eats because she's so worried. Once Link comes back to her house to investigate these matters, you're able to conveniently heal her with a fairy that you capture in one of your bottles. This cheers grandma up, and she fills up Link's bottle with her signature soup that can heal him. Also, it's a nice touch that throughout your journey, Grandma can send Link a letter in the mail wishing him to be safe while attaching all the rubies she has saved up in an attempt to help Link on his adventure, which is super sweet. It's clear that Link's grandma wants nothing more for her two grandchildren to return home safely. While Grandma seems like a caring sweet grandma, she also has an interesting wild side, where her figurine description in-game says, quote, She can be somewhat mischievous and enjoys playing the occasional prank on Link. I was trying to find some examples of this mischievous side of Granny, and I think it might be referring to during the start of your second quest. Instead of Grandma giving Link his standard green hero's clothes, she gives him the hero's new clothes, which are essentially nothing, which just results in Link wearing his starting clothes for the entire game. This is honestly pretty hilarious because Grandma just acts all nonchalant about it, like it's an actual meaningful physical gift she gives Link, and Link just acts all dejected and upset, like he got cheated or something. So all in all, Grandma's the best family member in the series, because she's a great cook, is super caring for Link and his sister, and she even offers a bit of comic relief. So that's all of Link's family members from the Legend of Zelda franchise, ranked from worst to best. I hope you enjoyed, and let me know who your favorite family member of all these is, and let me know what Zelda topic you want me to make a video on next. I have tons of video ideas in mind, so make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any future videos. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.